Thanks, Toby. It was a brilliant lecture. I think uh, that gives a basis uh, for my talk. I'll be talking more about, it'll be a, like a, uh, I would say most like teaching kind of thing, right? But what is interesting is that we need to understand the planet, right? Whether it is sustainability or anything, like uh, we had discussed in the first talk was about terrorism, right? And in fact, some people call this is God's terrorism, right? But we'll understand uh, what, uh, what is that earthquake, right? Uh, in the past, there are like the one uh, recent earthquake of 2011, Japanese one, and you also have seen that from right from 2004 till 2011, we have seen a destructive phase of Earth, right? Now we need to understand, uh, is earthquake prediction a possibility? Because this is some question which every one of us asked, and is it really hard for the geologists to uh, predict earthquakes, which you can uh, see the tribe. But what is interesting, I really want to uh, all of you to know Earth, right? Uh, energy right. is a basic source. So we know we are well familiar with the sun, right? So, but I think very less people knew that well within the Earth is also a lot of energy, and you can see that from when you go uh, when you see earthquakes or volcanoes, right? A lot of energy comes out. So the Earth actually wants to emit that energy. And oh, it's worse. So if you dissect this Earth, right? If you dissect it, there is like crust, it's a very thin land, and then we have got most of the Earth's mantle and then coal. Now what happens because as you go down, the energy, you know, there's a lot of energy within the coal, it tries to move out. So in doing that, because crust is cold and the inside is really hot, it forms a kind of cycling, right? It's called convection cells. You can see that if you have, a, uh, you know, the flask of water, you just heat the water, the water goes, it, you know, it's heated from the bottom and then it goes top, like the cold goes to the bottom. So that same thing happens here, right? Uh, and this is the main cause of driving we, what we call plates. I will go in the next slide and discuss about what is a plate, right? And you've seen the, you know, the motion. In fact, we are here, <coughs> we are still moving. You don't feel that, right? It's very, very small, but we, we move. That's called plate tectonics. Now, the science of earthquakes. Uh, again, like, what is a plate? Plate is like this earth, so uh, crust, crust is, as I said, it's very thin, then mantle. The top of the mantle, and crust, they form lithosphere, which is a little bit, which is rigid, and it is lying underlined by ethnosphere, which is uh, semi, like this, uh, which is not that uh, solid, right? And it tries to flow just like an iceberg, right? Iceberg in the ocean, it just moves. So it's exactly something similar happens. And what you have here, we have like they are called plates, and these plates move. For example, India has moved enormously from, you know, from there up to what you see now. We don't imagine these kind of things when it happens. You know, we think that the boundaries are limited, like this is Singapore, this is India, right? But that's not true. In geological sense, the boundaries move, right? We always, you know, there are always the boundaries change. So, and uh, this like, uh, in the next slide, sorry. Okay, so based on these plates, we have, you throw the, like this is the map of the world and you can see there are plates everywhere, right? Uh, you got Australian plate, Pacific plate. What happens to these plates? These, you know, they are the plates because you saw them, so they interact. There are interactions within the plates, sometimes they collide with each other, right? Sometimes they just pass each other, so there are interactions. And what is, what that interaction is going to do is, uh, this one is particularly interesting, right? I scanned it from uh, this book. Is a bit tilt, but this is a, this is a map of the world with all these boundaries. You see, there are boundaries. These are the plates. Now there are three major boundaries. If we talk about uh, the earthquakes, right? There are. We don't want to go into the details about these, but these things are very important. For example, you know, if you see this one here, mostly in the oceans, but the two plates. These are plates, right? They diverge. They don't like each other, right? They just move. When you move two plates. What happens, because it's solid earth, right, it's moving, the new material comes up, that's the magma, and it fills that space. It mostly happens in oceans. And one of the reasons 
that why you have very young crust in the oceans is because of this, right? In the continents, we do not have this process. That's why the continents are very old. So the oldest rocks you can find, for example, in Australia, is we are very old continents. But in oceans, you won't find that kind of thing, right? And because of this process. And this forms earthquakes. Again, we have another thing where one plate dives out of the another one, right? And this is called a subduction zone. Most of the destructive earthquakes are because of this, right? And one which was in Japan, right? In the Japanese earthquake, what happened? This, uh, you know, the uh, Pacific plate, right? It, it goes down under the Eurasian plate and the North American plate on the other side, and it forms what you have seen the tsunamis. Right? I'll go back into uh, details in the next couple of slides. And then we have another uh, boundary. They're called uh, transverse boundaries, where the two plates just slide past each other. And California is uh, the best example to describe that. Now, why I'm, why I'm telling you all these things? And the next slide, this is really very important because you need to understand that the earthquake is not just like, you know, the God just hates some people, right? It's not that true, right? Earthquakes happen everywhere. In fact, there is always, if I tell you now, there's an earthquake now, it's true, yes, 100% probability that earthquakes happen. So, if you plot these earthquakes on the map of the world and see the correlation, 100% correlation, you say 80% of earthquakes happen on these plate boundaries, right? So the thing is that, that's why this is called a certain pacific belt, it's called a ring of fire, right? You got earthquakes all along this ring. And we have this albino modern belt, <clears throat> all right? Uh, now, after looking at that, uh, what geologists are really like, they like to observe things, right? So we are observing, okay, this is a map of the world. Where was an earthquake? Earthquake was here. Now, after that, we need to explain it. What is an earthquake? Earthquake is nothing, <clears throat> it's an energy. If you have more energy, you want to do something, right? Similarly, Earth is energy is pushing something. It's Earth, you know, the, uh, for example, you got, uh, if I want to break this, I don't want to do that now. But if you do that, like, you break it, break it, break it, after some time, you, know, you fold it first, after a certain time, a time comes when it breaks. That we call, you know, the, my energy is being consumed in it in the form of strain, it forms, you know, and then that strain gets released as an earthquake. That's what an earthquake is. You can have two scenarios, either in the land, it could be on land, or under the oceans. On the, on, on the land, you can see there will be, there will be like, you know, first this folding kind of thing, and then there will be a rupture, you can see that rupture. But in the oceans, what happens, for example, this is the Sumatran case, right, this, this plate was diving down, and the Sumatra, this is locked, right, first because, because of the resistance, it resists resist up to certain level, and one level comes, then there's an earthquake, then there's a complexity that it can form tsunami. That's what you have seen in Japan recently because of this thing. Now, prediction. <coughs> Sorry. Going back to the prediction, uh, there was a famous guy, uh, uh, Rick, uh, Charles Richter, he says fools predict earthquakes, right? Now, why he says fools predict earthquakes? Because uh, he understands that it's not an easy thing. Earthquake uh, prediction is not easy. So you should understand that Earth is very complex. To understand, uh, to predict earthquakes is not an easy business. Uh, there was one forecasting which most of the people cite, right? And it is in the literature. It was from the China. Oh, sorry. Uh, from China, uh, Chinese. But there was an unusual animal behavior. But if this was an earthquake, if, if this is the prediction successful one, what, what happened in 1976? In fact, there was a recent earthquake as well. Why those earthquakes are not predicted? So I would think that most of the scientists think that this prediction was based on four, uh, these four shocks because there were the four shocks were bigger. For example, if there was an earthquake in Singapore tomorrow and the four shocks are tomorrow uh, today are uh, really shaky, so you were really scared. So the people were scared. That's why they flee. And uh, because in this one there was not much, so I don't think that this was a successful prediction. Now, to predict earthquakes, what do you really want? If you want to predict to me, if you want to know, you know, predict my behavior, what do you want to be interesting? You'll be interesting in knowing everything about me. Information is really important. So my past history, everything, so that you can, my prediction will be successful. And you should understand, that is why the earth prediction is not successful. Because we do not have information enough to say something about false, right? And in this case, what we need, we need these geological evidences, 
statistical information. I will go into it a little bit details. Uh, this is a map which shows you land as an ocean. And the location of Edge Falls, you know, I just put those forts on the top because it's maps. When you go on the land, you know this is a fault. You can see. Well, I can see a fault. Fault is going here, right? With oceans, what do you do? Right? In the oceans, it's really hard. So that complexity you have to keep in mind. Well, it is not easy business to do because earthquakes mostly are there. You, you have seen that Japanese earthquake was here. In fact, Japan is the really very, uh, you know, that they have done a lot of research on earthquakes, but still they cannot predict because of the complexity involved, right? And also the type of faults and uh, correlation with the regional faults. One more thing, for example, if you have a continuous fault, if you have a continuous fault, it's just one fault, it can behave because faults are you know, Japanese fault was the one which ruptured, was uh, almost 500 kilometers, just one rupture. That was a segment, that was one segment. It can behave differently. Different segments behave differently, right? Now, you can have fault, you know, you can have earthquakes here, earthquakes here, but you do not have earthquakes here. That we call seismic gaps. So the seismic gaps are very interesting and they give us a lot of clue about what's going to happen. Uh, in the past, for example, earthquakes in one, uh, uh, 120 years, you got earthquakes here, earthquakes here, you do not have earthquakes there. What it indicates? Often people say the silence is a dangerous thing, and I would say yes, that is true. Because when you have silence, it may be something is happening. And this quote from uh, the Telegraph, it was about the solar storms which are going to hit this Earth, the NASA Pocas, in 2030. They say, like earthquakes, you know, like earthquakes, in the, in the periods of quiet, that energy can build up and then suddenly be released in a giant event. That's what they are uh, talking about, the four solar uh, storms. So you have, you have these white things are a possible candidates or the possible regions where the earthquake is going to hit. You can have an earthquake in Sumatra. You can expect it any time in this area because we, we do not have one earthquake in this area for quite some time. Now, uh, there could be a statistical information you can use to predict earthquakes, right? So, for example, if you know, if I know that this fault segment is going to rupture and know the length of this fault rupture, then I can know how big it will be. For example, in the Japanese one, it was 310 miles and that has to go beyond this right beyond magnitude 8 and that was true it is more than 8 magnitude so from roughly from from the fault structure we can understand what could be uh, the viable also the seismic evidence right you can have four uh, those uh, aftershocks right sorry four shocks and aftershocks so these yellow things yellow circles are uh, four shocks and then you have aftershocks because this this was a japanese earthquake was this was this a sign to something is happening Right? You know, we get these four shocks often with earthquakes, but maybe this was a sign, but we have to work for, for it uh, more. Similarly, aftershocks can be used to predict earthquakes with time. And there are other things. For example, groundwater changes. You got a fault, it's big. There is water, right? Water peeps through the fault, and the groundwater really changes. So if you observe that, you can say that well, something is happening. Uh, similarly, gas release. Some people say that there are some particular, uh, for example, the rod arm gas is released during earthquake. That could be, that could we can use atmospheric effects. There was earthquake in, uh, sorry, there was earthquake in, uh, I think Iraq, where we have clouds forming during earthquake. So you can use that. Thing. Also, the change in the magnetic and electric property again with the conductivity, with the water, with the you know with some, some fluids going through the faults. You can all use all these things. Now I think uh, I'll conclude with this thing. Uh, the earthquake prediction, if you tell me, is earthquake prediction a possibility? I will say yes, it is possibility, but, but long term, yes, but short term, no, because at the moment, we do not have any uh, thing that we can predict. For example, in Alaska, there, was, there is a fault here, right, and this uh, pipeline was built after the fault, right, after the earthquake, it is, uh, geologists told them that, well, there is a fault, you have to be careful, that's why they build it like this. We can tell you this kind of thing. We can tell you where the faults are, and you have to take precautions based on the observation from the, uh, like the maps, these kind of maps we need for the whole Earth. Uh, now, to conclude that, I would say uh, what Tommy was uh, really, uh, I, I got in a study and said that, we, you know, we need to understand Earth, right? And to do that, the geoscience education is extremely important to understand the dynamic Earth, not only dynamic Earth, 
the whole system, the, you know, the, in fact, we are going to understand the solar system as well. But I think that is the basis. Uh, thanks a lot.